Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. And if you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. If you tap on the little like button, that kind of helps us too, so we appreciate that. <clears throat> um, it's cold. I mean, I'm out here in the garage with a cup of coffee. We got a propane heater going. We got, yes, we have ventilation, so we'll, we aren't going to like run out of oxygen or anything. We're doing this right. We're, uh, like Fred always says, safety second. Anyway, but here we are doing it. And in our last video, well, uh, let, me, let me finish up a little bit. Yes, we're cold. Yes, it's been raining for several days and nights. We're seriously thinking about building a big boat. I mean a big boat. <laughs> and get two of every kind of Harley on that boat. Priorities. Yeah, we know what's important around here. And maybe, maybe a couple of Siberian Huskies, too. Yeah, and then we'll be fine. Anyway... Two knuckleheads, two pan heads, two shovel heads, two, two flat heads, couple Indian chiefs, couple of Indian scouts, <laughs> two of everything. Anyway, it's just going to keep raining next week and all that sort of stuff. So I started thinking, you know, in our last video I was working on this knucklehead and I, I did a bunch to it. And I really think I've stopped the major oil spewing. I'm not sure. I did take the bike out and ride it on Christmas. I had the ride of my life. I mean, I really had a ball. Mike and I went out for a ride, and that was great. And I got back, and it doesn't... I hadn't cleaned it well enough, so I can't really be sure. But it wasn't like dripping bunches of oil like it had been. So I've been going over it little by little and getting it clean. And then we have a show coming up in January that we like to go to in Palm Springs. And I like to ride the knuckle to that one, and, and it's just really, really fun. Although last time, everybody made me ride up front, which was kind of not fair, because I said, why would you want to put me up front? First off, I'm not sure where we're going. One that I felt was an important issue. And the other thing was... I don't have a speedometer. This thing has never had a speedometer. When you're running down the road, you don't know. And they said, well, hey, just take it nice and easy. And I, well, yeah, I mean, this is a relic. We'll take it nice and easy, and we'll go down to Palm Desert, and we'll have this great thing. Go all the way down Highway 111, which is a ways. Um, you go out the 10 to the 111 and down the 111 all the way to Palm Springs and through downtown Palm Springs and you get to Palm Desert and it's out that way and it's at a hotel. I'll tell you about it after we get to the end of the video. But anyway. You go with the flow of traffic. There wasn't no traffic. Well, then you just run it. <laughs> I guess. All I know is we got down there to that place. We're getting off our bikes. And I said, I'm sorry if I held you guys up. Oh. Billy was riding next to me up front, and we were doing what I thought was 55, 60 miles an hour, making everybody happy, because I don't even know half these people that are following us. Yeah. No. I mean, they were all from different areas, and nice job. bunch of people. They really were. We got, anyway, nobody's speaking to me, and I said, well, what, what did I do? Was I going that slow? Yeah. Seems we were doing, what, 80, 85, something yeah, like that? We were between 80 and 85, and we were having a blast. I thought I was going 55, 60 miles an hour. We were just having a good time. And through downtown, we put on a hell of a show. Yes, sir. It was great. Anyway, all that being worth aside, doing worth overdoing. anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Yes, sir. <laughs> At the end of this video, I will talk about the shows that are coming up. Anyway, we're going to that show. So I said what I need to do is go over this thing a little bit because... With this things, it isn't just how many miles you have on them between servicing. You know, things that, are, that you normally loop are exposed to the elements on this old type of machinery. So just the, the, the fact that the, the wind is blowing by them at 80 miles an hour takes the grease <laughs> off of some of this stuff. You just gotta, gotta get in there and lube stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do a few of these things that I've done in previous videos. But unless you go back and 
dig through them all, you aren't going to see them. One other thing is a kickstand. So we'll pull this nut off the top of the kickstand. And I really prepared for this. I knew we were doing a video this afternoon, or this evening as it is now. And uh, I had to put new grease in my grease gun. And then bleed the air out of it. Hopefully it's caught up with me now and it'll work fine. Well, it's an old grease gun and I'm rather attached to it. I've had it a long time. Well, shucks. Let's just go like this. There, that worked. I liked it. We'll take this little piece off of here and we'll clean it up because we're here. And it just goes back on top again. I get closer, but I'm getting a tan over here. Oh, yeah, is that too? Yeah, we've got a heater going in here, a propane heater that is. Uh, I hope it's not making too much noise on the video, too. Anyway, I'm disconnecting this kickstand. Now notice that I took the top, the legs, that's called a leg stop that I took off of there. And by taking that off, I can just release the spring right off of here so easy without risking losing an eye or anything like that. <laughs> well, a lot of people have, have lost eyes from this thing. Okay, I apologize. No, I mean, it, yeah, I know it sounds funny, but it's, but it's sure not. Okay, so I just, it's actually in better shape than I thought it was. But it only takes a couple minutes to check it, so why not? Another thing is here where the spring goes in, we can put a little grease on there. Okay. Then we'll... Put a little grease on there. By the way, this is just bearing grease. This is nothing exotic or strange, but okay, so now I'm going to take this and put it right back in here, and I'm going to put that spring right back on there, and look at that. Now, I, I put some grease on these top rails here, and I'll uh, put this right back on again. Look at that. Now, my little rawhide mallet. There it is. Now it's on there. Whoops. <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. There. Now it's on there. It's really funny. If you don't know how to take one of these kickstands apart, you look at it and how do I fight that spring on and off? And so many people have been hurt by them. I just can't even, I, you know, I mean, and Harley came out with this kickstand in about 1936, and they're still using it on some models, I'm sure. It's a wonderful design. It's a, it's a terrific kickstand. Kickstand doesn't fold up on you. No. No, these work very, very well. And here I've got this old knuckle. Ugh. I got a pan over there and a shovel head, and they all use the same kind of kickstand. Jiffy stand is what Harley Davidson calls it. And of course, whatever they call it's correct. They made it. They write the rules. Okay, so. All right, we got the kickstand done. How about this, uh, this shift lever here? Now, what I did while I was out here earlier is I took out a felt marking pen and I drew a line right there on that shaft. It mimics this line on the, sh on the shift lever mm -hmm. so that when I take it off and then put it on again, it'll be in the same position as it was before I took it apart. Beautiful. Well, it is because, you know, I learned that with, with customers it was really important you're working on a guy's bike, 
and you put it back together and you automatically will put it together like you were doing it for yourself. Well, it's not for yourself. It's for this guy that owns a bike or this woman that owns a bike and, and you're making it not act right. Okay, so what do we got here? We'll wipe some of the old dirty off of it. And we're just going to tan in here so I can get a close up. There you go. All right, I'm going to take that, uh, take that rod off too. Well, shucks. Okay, now when we get this off of here, now I like to take this stuff apart and grease it. I mean, you can drip a little oil in there and it'll work, but I really like to take this stuff apart and grease it. So here is the shifting rod. And let's see, there it is. Let me get that step bolt out of there. What are you? Huh, what was that? It just fell apart. Oh, okay. It's all right. It can do that. Okay. There is that step bolt. This is just the old way ma machinery works. The modern stuff, they don't even tend to lube it. They just kind of have nylon bushings and things like that in it. And it gets rusty and sticky and creepy and awful. And then you wear it out, throw it away and get some more. And that's the way they do that today. The old way was to uh, do it this way. There we go. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to lube this. Look at that. Oh, we got that nice and clean. I guess it's been a little while since I've been in here. But it keeps all this stuff nice. Wipe that off a little better. Okay, now we'll put some grease on it. All right, a little around the back of it here, put it back in here, try to wiggle it into place without too much of a fight. And there it is. Now, that maybe didn't look like a real sanitary way of putting it together, but it all lined up. Okay, now I can put this back on here. Kind of an animal's been riding this thing. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Okay, put this back on here. So I'll hold it with one hand and tighten it down with the other. There it is, right about there. Okay, now I'm going to tighten this while cameraman Mike kills his telephone. There we go. Oops. Well, you could have dropped it and I'd have stepped on it. It would have gotten quiet. I did. 
<laughs> yeah, well. I was going to toss and shoot in the air, but it fell to the floor, so I just stepped on it. I understand. Okay. Okay, now we've got the pedal is tightened on. And now this linkage is tightened. And all of it's lubed. And the next one we'll do is a clutch rod. Because we can. Yeah, this is just routine maintenance. The chain is nice and lubed, so I'm not going to bother with it. At the moment. <coughs> there we go. Scooby-Doo. That's it. Okay, that's very nice. Now what we'll do, let me tighten this one more time just to be sure. Grunt. Okay. We'll take that off of there. Let's see, we'll clean that later. And uh, what I wanted to do was this rod is really an important part of this whole thing. And so I'm going to take this circlip, snap ring. It's not an E clip, so. Okay. This is not a real easy one. But I do have snap ring pliers, so we'll get in there and get it. Got it. And I didn't drop it. Okay, now we're going to take it off of here. Watch your hands, Mike. The reason being, this is a mouse trap. Yep. It is called a mouse trap for a specific reason. This thing is nasty. Okay, I'm going to grab it right here and I'm going to release it. But if anything were to happen and I yeah. didn't grab it there, it would go snap, break your fingers, break all sorts of things. Okay, just saying it. Just because we need to say those things. Okay, so I'm going to take this rod out of here and I'm going to put a little grease on the end of this. Now you can see this has got a washer on the end, which is not really original equipment. But it does make a nice little cushion in there for that thing to work on this arm. So we'll put that back in there. Okay. And then I'm going to wipe this off. Get it wiped out a little bit. This clutch does not need adjusting. It's working so well. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, now we'll lube this shaft here. Okay. This is a, a question that comes up real often with these mouse traps. People write in and they say, which hole was I supposed to use here? Mm -hmm. Well, Harley came out with these in 52. In 52 to 64, there was one hole. 65 to 67, there's two holes because they had to move it to allow for the electric starter and the big aluminum housings on the late model ones. So there's your, your hist history lesson for today. Okay, so we'll take this up here and we'll just kind of move it up there and we'll put that on there like that and then we'll uh, we'll kind of get this thing going a little bit there we go yeah that should go right on now And it snapped on there perfect. Nice. Yeah. Now, let's see. Let's see how that works. Anybody wants to know how, how easy that works? That's how it goes. Nice. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is there is a bearing in here. 
And there is a Zerk fitting. Oh, I see it. So we're going to take this here grease gun. Now, my dad had a service station when I was a kid. And he would say, that's what this is. It is a service station. And he really, really took care of his customers well, and he serviced all their cars, and he took a lot of pride in how he did it. And he showed me, when you pump something full of grease, like I just did, you put it in until grease comes out that's clean the other side. And that's the way I've always done it, because that's the way the old man taught me. There we go. Now these I actually lubed just a while back, so I didn't take it apart and do those. Okay. But while there was no lube on it there, I could have put grease on those. Yeah. But that's it for this side. Um, maybe in our next video we'll show how to, uh, maybe we'll go over all the Zerks in the front end. In fact, I think that's what we ought to do on our next video. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, well, we'll just go over them and explain them a little bit. But that takes care of this side for now. Um, what I did want to do is I have a little list here of events that are coming up that I'm going to. And I know people that are, aren't in California that it's not really practical for you to go to all those things that I love to go to. But the shows that I go to... Not that my opinion is worth that much, but, but the shows I go to, I go to because I think they're really, really good shows and I love to go to them. So when I mention them, you might maybe even write them down because you can Google them later and you'll see that other people have really taken some good pictures and, and really showed some. There's some really good shows coming up and wonderful things will be there. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'll just tell you what it is. Uh, Biltwell has a show in Del Mar, California. That's down in the San Diego area. That's January 14th. Any of this stuff, you can Google and get the information off the Internet. Paradise Road Show in Palm Desert, January 27th to the 29th. That's what you're getting. There. And that's, yeah, I'll be riding the knuckle to that. I mean, that's fun. It really is. And Maybe I'll show the kids another 50 mile an hour ride down 111. Okay, then let's see. Number three here. The Grand National Roadster Show. That to me is very near and dear to my heart. That's what they have now in place of the old Oakland Roadster Show. It is now the Grand National Roadster Show. And it is at the L.A. County Fairgrounds in Pomona, California. That's February 3rd to the 5th. Now, another thing I might mention is they have one big display of bikes there that is excellent. I love hot rod cars, too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but gee, you know. <laughs> there are things with four wheels that are pretty cool. Yes. Okay, so that's at the L.A. County Fairgrounds in Pomona, California, February 3rd to the 5th, the Grand National Roadster Show. The next thing, which I've been waiting for and I wait for every year, is Chopper Fest in Ventura County. Yes, That's at the Ventura County Fairgrounds, which is right on the beach in Ventura. It's right out on Surfers Point. I used to live down the street, and I just love it. It's a great show. That's the David Mann show where they show all of David's work and lots of good stuff. There will be a lot, and the, the display of bikes is over the top. Yep. Yep. And for me, it's kind of a reunion. It's like old home week. There's a whole bunch of people I get to see. That will be fun. Anybody that can go to that really ought to. Me too in there. And we, uh, the first one we went to with the Knuckle, well, I did take first place, best old school scooter. That was, what, 15 years ago, something like that. Okay, the other thing, and this one is in our area. This is out in Anza, which is out by Temecula, California. And that's the Hippie Killer Hoedown. Our friend Cuddy puts that on every year. And this is the sort of thing we've been missing because of COVID and all that. I'm hoping this year is going to be like, like things used to be, or as close as they can be. Anyway, we're going to be there. But the Hippie Killer Hoedown in Anza, California, that's cars, bikes, hot rods, rat rods, customs, 
Oh yeah, lots of music. Well, that's another thing with Chopper Fest. They always have great bands. Yeah. And Cuddy always has great bands out at his show. So these are things that are coming up and I'm really tickled that they're happening real close together because it sure fights boredom for me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, like I said, in our next video, we'll do the, we'll lube all the front end and all that sort of thing. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.